Hello, 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 and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much for being here again. You know, I do appreciate all of you that are binge listening to the podcast. And those of you that come back every week, I appreciate you as well. Thank you very much. Okay, today we are going to talk about the characters in the play. And if you have not read Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, here it is if you're watching on YouTube, Becoming Your Own Banker. You guys can see that my book is um, extremely distressed because I am, you know, I'm reading it all the time and I'm referring to it all the time and I'm giving lessons out of it all the time. So yes, my book is a great introduction to Nelson Nash's book, but that's all it is, is an introduction. There is stuff in my book that I did not put there that is in Nelson's book because there's no reason for me to rewrite Nelson's book. Okay. So with that being said, if you have not read Nelson's book, he talks about the characters in the play and which character do you want to be? And Nelson refers to these characters as one, the banker, that is the guy that works at the bank, right? That gets to determine who's going to, who's going to lend you money. Then there is the bank owner that they own the bank. And then there is the borrower. And so you need to be every one of those characters. This really came up for me. Um, this week we have some stuff going on personally with a pipeline that they want going through our property. And of course, I don't trust anybody that has anything to do with anything. And then you have eminent domain and you have all those things to worry about, right? So it doesn't matter if it's oil, it doesn't matter if it's water, whatever it is, somebody is on your land, they are most likely going to destroy it. I know I'm this negative Nelly about the whole thing. I woke up on Monday, it is Tuesday as I'm recording this, I woke up at Monday, kicking butt, taking names, Henri is all get out, the German passion kicked in, man, like full time, went to this meeting with these people, chewed their behinds, yep, German passion came out again, to the point where the guy said, well, I can see you're very passionate about this, um, yeah, I'm passionate about this. It's my land. It's my life. It's my my plans for my kids' inheritance, right? It is everything. And now you guys just think you should be able to do whatever the heck you want with it. Who are the characters in the play? And I was laying in bed thinking about this. Nelson talked about this all the time. And he did not talk about just the characters in the play as far as the banking system. Yes, that is the majority of what he was teaching us was the banking system. And so I'm going to go over that. But I want you guys to think about the characters in the play and how that just affects us on a normal level. And so... As we become infinite banking practitioners, and yes, you are a practitioner of infinite banking, right? You are somebody that has a policy if you have a policy. That means that you become the bank owner. You own the life insurance policy on yourself. You become owner of the, the um, company. When that company makes money, that company is going to share that in the form of a dividend with you, right? That means you are part owner of the business. Then you are the lender. You are the one that gets to decide when you're going to take the loan, how you're going to take the loan back. You become the banker as well. So now you own the bank and you become the banker. Well, you are also going to be the borrower because you're the one that needs the money. Now, there might be times where you have policies and you have a bunch of money in those policies and you don't need it. So now you become the lender to somebody else and somebody else is the borrower. But the whole idea here and the whole point of what Nelson was saying is there are characters in this play. 
and the play of the world. Welcome to the world, my friend. There are going to be these characters everywhere. And what, where do you want to position yourself in that play? Do you want to be the main character or do you just want to be the follower sitting in the background, not making any of the decisions? Do you want to be the actor? Do you want to be the producer? Do you want to be both? Because nobody said that you can't be both. So what do you want to be? In infinite banking, we want to be the person that owns it all, right? Because if we go to a bank, we're subject to whatever that bank decides. We have to follow their terms, their conditions. We have to play their game to get a loan. We have to give them all the information they want. If we don't want that to happen, then we need to own the bank. And so think about this on a multi-level. Because I talk about this, well, I don't, I don't actually talk about it enough, probably, um, for people to truly understand why we're doing infinite banking, why infinite banking is important. So many people want to say, oh, how does that life insurance policy look? How much premium is that? How fast is it growing? How is it structured? Yada, yada, yada. But this is where the infinite banking practitioner like myself comes in and says, who do you want to be? What character of the play? What piece of that control do you want to take back? I want it all because I'm a little bit of a control freak. I want it all. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to play with others. At some point, I hope I never have to play with others in the bank. No matter what the interest rate is, I hope that I can say, you know what, I'm, I'm done playing. I'm done playing. I'll just go do what I want with my money. And I'm not at that point. And it takes a long time to get there. You guys, I've been at this 12 years and I'm still not there. So many people think, oh, we should be there overnight. This isn't an overnight process. But here is the one thing that I am finding with my farmers is that my smaller operations are totally okay taking that control back. They're, they totally see that there is opportunity to own the bank, to be the banker and to be the borrower. They see that. The bigger operations are having trouble comprehending all of this because they're so big, they want control of all or nothing. Okay. Think about that bank on the street. Do you think that that bank said, you know what? Yeah, we're not moving into town because there's already other banks there. They already have all of our customers. We don't, there's no way we're going to get them all. And they already have them all. But a new bank comes to town and lo and behold, they start getting a customer here and a customer here and a customer here. And before you know it, they're building another branch. And then on the other side of town, they have another branch and another branch. Um, don't you think it would work the same way? No matter if you're a small operation or a big operation, you have to get started and then we start building branches, AKA policies, so that we can start utilizing all of those policies. Again, I've been at this 12 years. I don't know what I have. <clears throat> Let's see. Two, four, five policies I think I own outside of like five whole life that I use outside of like some long-term care policies that I own and that sort of thing. And so I think we have like five, maybe six. I don't remember, but it took me 12 years to get there. Should I maybe have more policies? I don't know. Maybe I'm pretty conservative. So I'm not starting policies just to start policies. But we have to build that system and we have to build those branches 
just like the bank builds those branches. But the bigger our operation, the less we want to start because we just can't do it all. Well, that seems kind of silly. Does that mean even like, let's just relate this to the farming world. Farmers are the most genius people, right? They're constantly building and engineering and creating and inventing new product, making things better for their industry. They're just handy people. And so can you imagine if the tra- when the tractor was invented, somebody said, well, we can't make that any better. Nobody's going to buy that. Are they really not going to buy that? Because I'm thinking, like, where would we be? Where would we be if people just said, you know, I think we're good where we're at. We're just going to stop. Can't get any better than that. It seems to me based on my clientele and who I talk to, the bigger we are, the more we think we can't control it all right away. So we're not going to do it all right away. And I don't need the system because I'm set. In my book, I talk about holes in a boat that it doesn't matter. If it's a big boat or a little boat, the holes are all relative and everybody's sinking at the same rate. Because bigger operations have the same expense ratio in most cases than a smaller operation. Smaller operation may actually have smaller holes, less expenses, right? Maybe they can barter equipment. They can borrow stuff. Bigger operations have to buy that stuff or have to lease that stuff. Bigger operations might have more expenses as far as fertilizer, chemical, seed. Smaller operations may not have those expenses. They may be doing something else. Like I have a lot of clients that do regenerative agriculture. They don't have those expenses. They're small. They can do that. Bigger operations are going to have those higher expenses. And so the holes in their boat might be a little bit bigger, but don't, where do you want to be as a character in the play? Now, when I look at this and look at what's going on just in our individual environment and the characters in the play, we all know by reading Nelson's book that he disliked the government. And we all know that I do not like the government myself. Stay out of my business. Let me do what I'm going to do. And so when these people come in, and I don't care what it's for, right? Mine just so happens to be a pipeline at the moment. So when these people come in, you got to look at the characters in the play. Who's behind the smoke and mirrors? Who is the one pulling the strings? How long have they been pulling these strings? Where are we going with the strings? Do I want to be the puppet that's played? Just like we're played when we go to the bank, even though it, it's a great relationship with our banker, we're still being played. We're still being told what we have to do. Do I want to be played? And Nelson talked about that a lot. When we got to visit with him one-on-one, he was a libertarian. He was a Mises Institute studying individual. Those, that is his economic background was the individualism of us controlling it. And guess what? We have to We can't just look at that as the banking system and say, oh, these are the characters in the play. We want to be the banker. Think bigger about that characters in the play. Who is playing us? And I can imagine the majority of you listening are going to agree with me. And some of you may not. And frankly, it doesn't matter to me. Doesn't mean we can't be friends right? Because I have lots of clients that don't agree with me. I have lots of friends that don't agree with me. I love having the conversation because we can have those conversations. But I feel like, geez, hmm, 
There's a lot of characters going on here. There's a lot of people being played. Even in our own environment, we have elections coming up in a few days. It's unbelievable the playing that's going on. It's unbelievable the corruption of who's been paid off with tax dollar money and all the stuff that's going on. It doesn't ultimately matter what state or what county you're in. It's everywhere. It's so funny when I talk to people that just beat up California. They just beat it up. And they're like, oh my gosh, California is awful. New York is awful. You know, Minnesota is awful. All these governments are absolutely awful because those are the ones we hear about in the news. Pay attention to what's going on at your local level and you will also see the corruption. I don't pay attention to what's going on at a global level. Very little. Should I pay attention? Yes, I know enough to understand the big agenda of what's going on and I pay attention to the news enough to see, but I do not have to engulf myself in it all day long because then you guys, I would be angry all the time. But it's funny when you back away from even the news, like I used to watch it all day long. I was even more ornery than I am now. And so Talk about an angry little German. So now I've backed away from it and it's, you can clearly see who's being played, who the characters are, who the puppets are. Take that whole piece of characters in the play that Nelson talks about and apply it beyond the banking system. I mean, first let's apply it to infinite banking. I want you all to start understanding what I'm talking about because forget about the policies for one second and think about how much control you want to have in your life, in your finances. If we give that money to a 401k guy and a broker and a financial advisor, we've just given up control. We are no longer the ones in control. We want them to do it for us and they don't give two stinks about how they perform in our 401k and IRAs. They don't care. It's part of their portfolio. We'll just mix it all up. We'll do what we're doing for everybody. The people that I know who are making money in the market are the ones that own their own investment. They're managing it. They're investing their own stock. Because why? They've taken control of that and they have become the financial advisor instead of handing it off, instead of me allowing the bank to determine what's going to happen with my loan and what's going to happen with my money. I get to determine that. I get to decide that. Characters in the play are everywhere, everywhere. And this aha moment came for me just yesterday. Sadly to say, I'm here. I'm not going to hide anything from you guys. I am not like, like, it's not that I'm not a big thinker. It's just sometimes I even get in my own view, right? I get, I put my own blinders on once in a while and I get my own little box and it's hard to sometimes get out of that because I teach the same thing. Well, Guess what? We don't always have to do the same thing. Take the blinders off. Pop your head out of the box. There's characters everywhere. The play is going on in every aspect of our life. In our families. In our government. In our neighborhood. With our banks. With our finances. With our 401ks and IRAs. What part do you want to play? That is a question that we need to start asking ourselves. Man, I got a little riled up today. So ask yourself that. I have been for the last 24 hours. I have been. And I know what part of the play I want to be in. I want to be the director. I want to be the one in charge. 
because then I get to determine what happens. But I don't want to be the puppet. Uh Uh-uh. No, sir, not this girl. So think about it. Decide where you want to be. Read Nelson's book. If you've not gotten Becoming Your Own Banker, please go to farmingwithoutthebank.com. Grab his book. If you've got it, read it again. I read it all the time. Read it again. And then start being the one in charge. If you are a big operation listening to this, decide when you're going to get started to be the one in charge. When are you going to become the bank, the banker, and the borrower? Because right now that's not happening. And it's hard as a big operation to start small. It's hard. But guess what? It can be done. It's going to take generations, but it took you generations to get where you're at. So why is the expectation any different? We are not going to get rid of banks anytime soon. And probably never. For a majority of people. But if we can get a small percentage of people out of that banking system, becoming their own bankers in control, what a different environment it will be for those individuals. That is the goal of everything that Nelson started. Get out of the system and the rat race, rat race, (laughs) as Robert Kiyosaki calls it. Get out of the rat race and figure out how you can be the producer of your play. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Um, Thanks for listening. I hope that you have a absolutely fantastic day. Go to farmingwithoutthebank.com, grab your books, share them with friends, give them to neighbors, give them as gifts, whatever. I talked to somebody yesterday that got a book from somebody that got a book from somebody that bought the book. That book changed hands three or four times, I do believe. It was very cool. So if you have the book sitting there and you don't think that it's worthwhile, give it to somebody else. It's so funny how many people I meet with that didn't actually buy the book. Their friend bought the book. Their friend's too chicken to talk to me. So then they read the book and then they talk to me. So even if you're listening and you've been too chicken to talk to me, why? What, what am I going to do? Like I can't, I'm not selling you anything. I'm going to try to teach you something. If you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. No pressure on this side. All right, guys, email me, maryjoatwithoutthebank.com. Let me know if you have any questions, anything like that. Happy to answer. Otherwise, you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.